Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to add in reference images to the 3D viewport so that you can make models faster and more accurately to your vision. So actually adding in a reference image is actually pretty easy to do. There's just one question that you need to ask yourself. What type of reference image do you need? The first type of reference image is one that will stay in your 3D viewport and you can view it from any angle and it's really to be used as a reference when modeling specific things like hairstyles or sculpting faces or other objects or muscles or anything like that. The second type of reference object is supposed to be used more of a background object to help you build a base mesh or a base object super precisely. Now you know I'm going to show you both, so let's start talking about the first type, which is just that reference model. So to add in either the reference image or the background image object, all you have to do is hit Shift A to get the Add menu up, go to Image, and then choose either Reference or Background. Now the reference image is the one I want to talk about first, so let's go ahead and add one of those in. So when I've loaded this reference image, what you can see is that it behaves like a normal object in my scene. You can see in the outliner, it's labeled as an empty object, and it's of the image type. Now, I can treat this object just like I would any other, so I can move it around, I can scale it, I can rotate it, whatever I need to do to this image to position it the way that's going to be most beneficial to me, I can do that. We also have properties that we can manipulate if we go down to the object data tab on the property panel. We can change the size, which is basically like scaling it, but not exactly the same. We can change the transparency to go fully transparent or opaque or anywhere in between. And we can actually change the offset if we're not happy with where the image is actually placed. So if we wanted the image to be in the bottom left hand corner, we could set it to zero and then zero on the X and Y, and now the pivot point is in the exact bottom corner for our model. And for this, if we were going to use this, this would be a great reference model for if we were working on sculpting a man's face with a mustache and beard, and I could leave this reference image up. When I go into the sculpting workflow, if I'm starting to work on this, I can see what I'm looking at and be just fine. So that is the first type, it's the reference image type. We also have, you'll notice, depth and side values. Depth just tells us whether or not it's going to be viewed in its own position, if it's always going to be in front, or if it's always going to be in the back. The side option allows us to see which side's being shown. So if we look at this from the front and we spin around, we can now see it's reversed and we're viewing the object from the back. If we change that to front, we see nothing when we look at it from the back and only from the front and we'll only see it from the back if we choose that option. Honestly though, I would leave these at default and both because when you change the depth and side, you essentially remove any difference between the two types of image objects that you can add in to your scene. So that's the reference image. Now let's take a second and talk about the background image. Now while the reference image is constantly up in your scene, the background image is really meant to be used as something more of just a background image that you can build your model off of and kind of cover over. So let's switch to the orthographic view and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this reference image that we had. And then I'm going to add in a background image here and bring in this character model. Now shout out to Dave Ravoy from the Blender Foundation for actually making this character modeling sheet. It is not something that I have done uh, but it's something that he worked on. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set this up as if we were going to create a character based off of this. So first thing I'm going to do is change the offset on the Y to zero so that our pivot point is at the very base of the object here. And then what I can do is I'll actually merge all of these vertices to a single point, just hitting Alt M and then merging them at a single point. Now the reason I did that is because when you set up a character, there's a few things that you can do to actually make the character base modeling really quick, and I'll be covering that in the character creation course. But for now, I really just wanted to hide that cube and get it out of the way. So with this, we have three views of our character. We have the front view, the right side view, and the back view to give us all the information about our character so that we could model it in the most effective way possible. So what we can do with this reference image, now that we know 
This is the front view, the side view, and the back view. We can actually change the offset here so that we have a front view. And then when we switch to the right view, we notice that that object is no longer uh, there. We still have it selected, but it's only displaying in the orthographic mode. So when we look at it from the front, we'll see the front view of the object here and we could zoom in and we could see the front and it would be aligned up exactly in the middle here so that we can create our base mess as accurately as possible to this concept art. However, if we look at it from the right hand side, like I said, it disappears. So we'll add in another background object in the exact same way and then change the offset on the Y to zero. And now we have a character model from the front. We're seeing the front view and now we can see the side view and if we were to look at the back, we could also add in another one and just make it show the background back here. And so we'll just change the offset. So now when we look at the object from the front, we see the front of the character. From the right hand side, we see the side view. And then from the back, we're looking at the back view so that we can make sure our model lines up exactly with the concept art. Generally, reference is used to keep the object on the screen while you're working and the background is just to help you see the object as you're setting up the base. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.